adenine on one strand of DNA is always going to pair with thymine on the other strand. And the same is true for cytosine on one strand and guanine on the other strand. We call this complementary base pairing. Now, this isn't compliment like someone said something nice about you, right? That's like a compliment, and that's actually spelled different. That's with an I, compli, right? That's where the I is, com P L I, compliment. They've paid you a compliment. This is compliment with an E. And when you use the word compliment with an E, it actually means you create a whole. In other words, like if two people really compliment each other well, that means that together they really have different skills. So if this person's really good at this, maybe this person is really good at something else. And together they complement each other. They bring something different into the, uh, the whole. And you can sort of think about this because this word complement, it, it's the same root as complete. So, you know, you have two things that complete each other and adenine and thymine are going to bond to each other. They have a complement complementary base pair with each other because they sort of complete each other that way. One is a uh, primity and one is a purine. So they complement each other. So we call those complementary base pairing. So here, when we look at the different bases of DNA, here in orange is guanine. So we know guanine is always going to form a base pair with cytosine, which is in red. And then the purple one here is thymine. So we know on one strand, if it's thymine, it's going to be adenine on the other strand, okay? So T and A always form a complementary base pair. And then the other two, C and G, always form a complementary base pair with each other. And it doesn't matter if, if guanine is on this strand or if it happens to be on the other strand, okay? The other nucleotide on the other strand is always gonna be cytosine. And the same is true if, if thymine is on this strand, well, it's going to be adenine on the other strand of DNA. Or if adenine is on this first strand, then it's going to be thymine that forms that complementary base pair on the other strand. Now, this complementary base pairing is really important to keep in mind because when we're copying DNA or when we're creating um, RNA, it's going to follow those same rules where if new DNA is being laid down in the five prime to three prime direction always, well, those base pairs and the nucleotides are going to be complementary to the template of DNA that's being used to copy from. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about that in a different video if you're interested. So here's a question for you, something to try out. Here we have just a small piece of DNA, and we know it's going from left to right because there's the five prime end on the left and the three prime end on the other side, right? So we know this piece is going left to right. Now, our sequence of bases in these nucleotides is A, T, T, G, A, C, T, C, A, G. Okay, so adenine, then thymine, thymine, guanine, adenine, cytosine, thymine, cytosine, adenine, guanine. That's the order of our bases of the nucleotides from five prime to three prime. So my question for you is, do you, can you determine what the other strand of DNA, because DNA is double stranded, what will be the bases that correspond to this strand um, of DNA? Okay, so I'm going to give you a second, but see if you can figure out we're trying to make the other strand. And just by having this one strand, we can determine what the base sequence is in the other strand by using complementary base pairing. Okay, I'm going to give you a second, see if you can figure it out. And remember, you can always pause the video if you need more time, okay? All right, you ready to walk through this? Okay, well, if on this strand is a nucleotide with an adenine base, then we know adenine forms a complementary base pair with thymine on the other strand. So the other strand is going to have a thymine uh, bonded there. Okay, the next nucleotide in our sequence here has a thymine. In fact, we have adenine and then two thymines. So we know in the other strand, we're gonna have thymine, and then adenine and adenine, right? Because if on one strand we have thymine, we know we have adenine on the other strand. Now here we get to a guanine. So this is a little different. Guanine on this strand 
means that on the other strand, we're going to have a cytosine, right? Because guanine and cytosine always form that complementary base pair. So on this other strand, we're going to have T, A, A, C, T, G, A, G, T, C. That's going to be the sequence of our bases and the nucleotides of the other strand. And we know this because of how these you know, biochemical and physical uh, rules work within DNA, where if there's adenine on one strand, then that means there's going to be a thymine base pairing with it on the other strand. So thymine is going to pair with adenine. Uh, here's a thymine. So there's going to be adenine in this one. Same thing here. There's a guanine on this strand. There's going to be cytosine on the other strand and so forth and so on. So you can sort of test yourself by coming up with some random arrangements of bases in a strand of DNA, and then see if you can come up with the complementary base pairing, uh, you know, which nucleotides are gonna be on the other strand and which bases are gonna be found in those nucleotides. Okay, now here's my last question for you. Which side of this new piece that we made is the five prime end and which is the three prime end? Remember five prime to three prime is gonna be in the four direction. So if this side here of our old strand is five prime and the right side is three prime, we know that this piece is going from left to right. Now we also know that DNA is anti-parallel which means that the other strand goes in the opposite direction. So if this top strand is five prime to three prime, left to right, then it makes sense that the new strand is five prime to three prime, right to left. Okay, so our top strand is going left to right. Our bottom strand is going right to left. And we know that four direction, you know, is five prime two, three prime, okay? So they're anti-parallel, they go in opposite directions. And again, why do we care about this? Well, because new DNA is always gonna be made in the five prime to three prime direction and it works anti-parallel on its template. So when we're learning about how DNA is replicated or messenger RNA is made, we need to always know, are we talking about the five prime end or the three prime end, okay? Which direction is this strand of DNA going?